Hello interwebs, I hope you're all doing well. Unfortunately, this is going to be a video where I'm going to vent my frustrations at a situation that I find to be deeply troubling, uh, honestly disturbing, anger inducing, frustrating, and one that I think really needs discussion and correction, especially uh, on YouTube's part because the fact that this situation was allowed to happen um, really upsets me and disturbs me and uh, I think points out some hypocrisies that I think YouTube needs to really address uh, and uh, I think we need to start discussing it uh, about this platform and how it treats LGBTQ creators. This is nothing uh, new, but I think this specific situation elucidates a problem that has been growing and growing and growing on YouTube and honestly just needs to be really uh, thought of and discussed. So, to get to all of that, I'm going to provide an update about a situation that happened yesterday. Uh, if you caught the video that I released yesterday, some of you already may be aware of the fact that on Friday, I released a video that I had been planning for a very long time. I was really, really proud of it. It was a video that I thought was going to be very helpful. Uh, I thought did some creative things within the work of it and actually was going to discuss um, a topic that really needed discussion. And that was my four hour long, I know I like to make really long videos, uh, video dissecting and going going over and debunking the transphobia within Matt Walsh's, Matt Walsh being a host of the uh, Right Wing Daily Wire channel's uh, documentary, quote unquote documentary there, What is a Woman? The video went through all of the issues with the documentary. I pointed out facts and uh, like literal things that he lies about and, and misconstrues or vilifies around transgender people and transgender healthcare and uh, more beyond that. Uh, it was a video that went uh, upon uh, all these different things that were a problem with Matt Walsh specifically, but also a lot of right wing rhetoric around trans people and LGBTQ people in general. And I think it was a really important video, not just because I made it, but I think it's a topic that needs more discussion, whether or not I made the content or not. Um, so I think that it was something that was deeply, deeply needed considering all the misinformation that is being spread around trans people. Unfortunately, uh, about three hours after that video went up, after it had gotten a decent amount of uh, like momentum in the algorithm, which uh, uh, is, is really great to see for a four hour video. When you put out a big video like that, it's always scary to see if it's gonna get momentum. It got 13,000 views in the first few hours, which is amazing, especially for my content. It got taken down, and I, when I say taken down, it got removed uh, by YouTube for, quote, violating their sex and nudity community uh, guideline policy here on YouTube. So when I say removed, I mean literally the language they moved was removed. And this is the first time I have ever gotten a community strike on this channel. And that is a really important thing to discuss the difference between this and something like a copyright strike or an age gate. Many of you have probably heard how YouTube does copyright strikes where like if you put up a video and it has like a clip from a TV show or something, it can get blocked by the people who own that copyright and you can dispute it whether it's fair use or things like that. And there's whole nuances around the laws of that and the specifics how to use fair use guidelines. Uh, they give you three strikes with that, but you're, there's, they've done a lot of work in their back end to actually, I will say it's not perfect, but improve that system still gives a lot of power to the copyright holder, even when you're legally using uh, clips and commenting on them uh, but there is some nuance where it doesn't like immediately take down your stuff you can get your it uh, doesn't like immediately demonetize stuff in certain cases so while I still have issues with that system uh, a lot of them uh, is much more nuanced than what's happened here the next system that they have is age gating now what age gating does is it recognizes that content may have nudity in it may have uh, you know violence in it that may not be appropriate for all ages but still allows the video to go public uh, and does not have constant to any issue with your channel. It just sort of keeps it at 18 plus. Now there are issues even with that as well. Sometimes the age gating flag uh, is not always appropriate. I think I've gotten my own content flag for age gating that I don't think constitutes it. Um, as well as the fact that it requires people to log in to be able to see your video uh, on YouTube, which can really hurt it in the algorithm. And also some people out there don't want to have logins for YouTube, considering that in some places it requires you have IDs to log in and things like that. And that's a lot of public information to give a platform, which is I totally understand. Um, so again, while I don't love age gating, there are uh, nuances there. What a community strike though is literally YouTube telling me that I broke their community guidelines, that I did something like absolutely actually wrong. Like not that there's like nuances of it or copyright stuff. Like, no, like you did something wrong. You violated our community guidelines. Um, and, and I, I take that personally. 
as a creator and here who wants to build community, who wants to build trust in uh, my platform with my community, with YouTube, to say that I violated uh, community guidelines, I, I, I take that as very personal. Even more so, while this first one, because this is the first time that this has ever happened on my channel, was uh, oh, given to me to be a, a warning, uh, if it happens again, quote unquote, uh, in their mind, I contest, and we'll get to that in a second, whether this was even constitutes me having done that. Um, but then if it happens again, I get a strike, three strikes, your channel gets deleted. And also if I get a strike uh, for the first time, they warned me in this email that they sent me that my channel would not be allowed to upload things for an entire week, nor would I be able to live stream, which hurts my livelihood, ability to pay my bills, which uh, I find very anger inducing that they threatened me with that, uh, given the fact that I don't consider this what happened in this situation to have violated their policy at all. So let's talk about that and why I am so deeply angry about this specific situation. Because you see, uh, in my initial video where I talked about my frustration with this, I said that there was no nudity in the video at all and that I was deeply shocked by this revelation. Now, having gone over and looked at the video with a fine tooth comb just to make doubly sure, I will say there are two additional clips that might constitute, uh, the, well, three things that might constitute what YouTube consider to be nudity or sex. However, I do not think that in any of these three clips violate their policy in any way, sh shape, or form, do not violate their community guidelines guidelines in any way, shape, or form, and the fact that they said that it did um, honestly pisses me off, and honestly, uh, for, for reasons that I, I need to discuss that I think um, honestly is, is very um, offensive to me as an LGBTQ creator uh, and a creator who likes to educate uh, about these types of topics uh, for what it means if these things were the reason that this video got flagged for sex and nudity. Now, before I even get to the three clips that might have gotten flagged and why I take issue with them, the big issue that I have here is that I, I have to guess what these three clips were. Because as I showed in my first video, when YouTube gives you this uh, sort of uh, uh, strike or violation against your channel, what it'll do is it'll give you, and I'll show a video of it here, it'll show you this appeals process that you can go through. But what it'll say is say, review your video. And the wording that it's used is almost shaming. It says, check your video to learn why you didn't violate our, uh, our policy. But it provides no time codes. So my video is four hours long. So I have to sit through a four-hour video and guess what the problem was. You don't give time codes. And the fact that you are the one that's saying I violated policy, which means that you must have had a specific section to say that I violated that policy, uh, you can provide me time codes so that I don't have to guess what the problem is instead of just sh sitting there shaming me from on high saying, guess, guess what, what the problem was. It feels like a very much like a parent telling you to sit in the corner, especially considering, again, the fact that I don't think I violated policies at all. Let's get into that. The first uh, clip that might have possibly triggered this nudity and sex violation was a clip of a mannequin that I have in the video. This is not nudity, it's a mannequin. I hope I don't need to say any more than that. There are many videos on YouTube that feature mannequins. Uh, the mannequin that you see in this video is actually used in a horror sequence in the video, and there are numerous video game sequences of, with clips on YouTube where you see mannequins naked in horror sequences. It's not sexual, it's not nudity because it's not even a person, so I, I am uh, deeply frustrated that if that if that is the one that uh, uh, caused this. The second possible clip that occurred is during the video, I show a clip from Matt Walsh's What Is Woman, by the way, not my own clip, Matt Walsh's, uh, of Matt interviewing a nudist. And in the clip, the man is, you know, you can see, you know, a decent chunk of his body, though he is wearing a cock sock, you can't, and so he actually is covering his nudity, and he is in public in the clip, so his nudity at that stage, the amount of nudity that he's showing is legal in public. So if it's legal in public, I'm shocked that it's not allowed in a video like this. Um, but anyways, the clip itself is literally about the man talking to Walsh about how nudity is not inherently sexual. And the man is absolutely correct. You worry about kids walking around out here? No, because uh, I raised two daughters. They're two of the most well-adjusted adults. They grew up around naked people. And uh, there's been studies that have shown that children raised around non-sexual nudity actually have fewer hang-ups when they're adults. People do have hang-ups. There's a lot of things hanging right now yep. during this conversation. That clip that you just saw was an edited version of that clip, but he is absolutely right in that clip. It is not inherently sexual to show that nudity. Now, here's the other thing with that. Maybe some of you would be like, well, Jesse, that is very close to showing a lot of nudity. I even, um, you know, kind of pushed in on that clip that I showed you just now. So uh, maybe you're like, well, Jesse, that is a bit of nudity. 
Let me point you back to uh, YouTube's violation, content violation policy. They say in their policy, we review educational, documentary, artistic, and science content at a case-by-case -case basis. Limited exceptions are made for content with sufficient and appropriate context where the purpose of posting is clear. So what I would argue is that this clip is educational and in numerous different contexts. Number one, I am ed using it to educate about a clip about Matt Walsh and why Matt Walsh is using is incorrect in his vilifying of this man showcasing nudity. So it's educational in the context that I'm uh, talking about the video. It's educational in the sense that the man is educating about why nudity is inherently sexual. So there's that aspect of it. And I would even argue that it's a documentary because I'm talking about Matt Walsh's own documentary. Uh, as well as the fact that my video myself might constitute a documentary about his documentary. So I think it fits those three criteria that would qualify for the case by case basis. By saying, if this is the clip that they say is uh, constituting sex and nudity, then they're already inherently agreeing with Matt Walsh in that clip. Matt Walsh is literally saying that any nudity is inherently a sexualized thing. That's literally the point that he's making in the documentary, which I find deeply offensive because he's absolutely wrong in that. And it's how he makes an argument to sexualize not only just people's bodies, but LGBTQ people and trans people specifically. It's the basis for his argument, thereby leading to his transphobic arguments that he's making in the film. So if this is what YouTube is saying constitutes a violation of their sex and nudity policy, in their own words, constitutes non-consexual sex activity, unwanted sexualization, or otherwise degrading sexualizing in a, of an individual, then they're inherently agreeing with Matt Walsh. They're inherently agreeing that people's bodies are inherently sexual. Um, and I don't think this clip fits any of those definitions. And so I kind of find that offensive if that's the clip that's being called out here. The third clip that might possibly uh, have triggered this violation is this clip where Matt Walsh is shown a uh, book that is made for 10 year olds and up to give them sex education. For 10 years and up. Here's just one page I want you to see here. For 10 and up, huh? It's, it's unspeakable what these people have done to our children. When did that start? When was it decided that we need to start teaching kids about this stuff at such a young age? Again, kind of the same thing applies here that I was talking about with the other man. This book is made for 10 year old kids. It is made to educate them about sex in a healthy way. It is educational, both within its own context and it's educational within my context of the video where I am talking about Matt Walsh's clip. And the recommended age for exposing kids to healthy sex education is, according to research done by Georgetown University, 10 and up. This is not saying that kids should have sex at 10 years old, but teach them about sex. If this is the clip that is said that is violating their sex and nudity policy, then that is saying, again, that Matt Walsh is correct, that this is inherently sexual and too much for kids. Uh, and, and I, again, find that deeply offensive because that is exactly how he builds his basis for making his transphobic arguments that trans people and LGBTQ people are inherently sexual just by existing. So I find that offensive if that is what their problem is. So those are the three clips that might possibly have constituted uh, the violation in their mind. Now, even if you agree with them that says, look, Jesse, I hear you. I understand why you're upset. But these still, I would, I personally would have said that those violated their sex nudity policy. And you know what? I don't agree with you, but I can understand and appreciate where you're coming from there. What I would say back to that is they gave me a community strike for this, a community, or at least a warning for a community strike for this video. The thing that I would have understood, not agreed with, but understood, is if they gave me an age gate on the video. If they said, look. This constitutes an educational context. It, it constitutes a documentary context, but we don't feel that it is appropriate for all ages. Um, and your video can still be up, but it's not uh, appropriate for all ages. I would have disagreed because I do think in both of those clips that I talked about uh, that they aren't, that, that in fact, one of them is literally made for kids. Uh, and the other one is talking about how literally nudity isn't sexual around kids inherently. So I would argue that these videos don't constitute an age gate either, but I could understand the argument for it on that point. And at the very least, if they had done the age gate, I could have appealed it, could have talked to people that I know at YouTube, and I could have uh, had a discussion while the video was still live and at least some people would be able to see it. But by giving me a community strike, not only does it kill the video, means no one can see it, means uh, that the, the momentum that it was getting in the algorithm is now stopped dead completely. But it also means that, again, I am held as if I violated a community uh, guideline, which I find deeply offensive and hurtful. And it's in saying that I was sexualizing my audience in, uh, and presenting sexual material to my audience when I wasn't. And it vilifies me as a creator. And it makes me look bad as a person and as a creator. 
saying that I am making sexual content as if I'm equivalent to like porn on this site. And we can talk about porn. I have varying views on porn, but like I am not posting porn on this site. That's not what I was doing. I was educating about these things and it was important to do so. And by saying that these things are nudity and sex and violate a community strike and not just an age gate, it is agreeing inherently with Matt Walsh. It is agreeing inherently with these creators who are saying that LGBTQ people are constituting rumors of that our bodies are inherently sexual for just existing. It is siding with those arguments. And I personally find that very offensive. I find it deeply, deeply offensive. Even more what frustrates me, I said before that when I went to appeal this, they didn't give me time codes for the video, which is frustrating because I have to guess what the problem is, which should be on them to present to me what the issue is, especially if they're going to, in the back end, shame me uh, repeatedly saying you violated the community guidelines and put notices all up. Even when I opened up the app, I got uh, notifications saying you violated community guidelines, even when I appealed the decision. So like the app is shaming me. Not only is that a problem, but when I went to appeal, their appeals, they allow you to leave a comment on the appeal. They only allow you 800 words to appeal the video, which is not enough, especially in a situation where I don't know what the problem was. Because then what I had to do is I tried to put in my comment, it's like, okay, only uh, what I basically just said to you, these are the three clips that I think it might be. Again, I have to say might be. Here's the problems that I disagree. Here's why I disagree with that but I'm only given 800 words. So I have to make an argument for three different clips, none of which if I know is the correct one. And I have to try and articulate it in less than 800 words. I just spent 10 minutes explaining to you what the problem is. I, I, that's all I get. And that's whether or not the video gets appealed or not. That is absolutely wrong. Like at the very least, even through all of this, give me more than 800 words to make my appeal. What the absolute i'm not going to say the f word because i don't want to get flagged again but yeah pisses me right off one final thing that i wish to say before i give an update on what i'm planning to do with the video going forward is this last argument here so i've already said the problem that i have with if these are the reasons that you're saying my video violates these policies you're inherently agreeing with matt ross and right-wing people who are sexualizing lgbtq people which i find deeply offensive but even more so one thing that this brought to my attention is their community policy quite literally states quote that it violates policies when content features non-consensual sexual activity unwanted sexualization or that otherwise degradingly sexualizes an individual so if that is their wording of what violates YouTube's policy, why the hell are so many right wing and uh, you know anti LGBTQ videos allowed on YouTube that inherently sexualize transgender people? Why are people like Matt Walsh or Tucker Carlson or Fox News or a billion others that I could possibly name uh, constantly allowed to make videos calling LGBTQ people groomers, calling trans people groomers, saying trans being trans is inherently a sexual fetish? That is some that is unwanted sexualization of me as a trans person, of the trans community, of trans people in general. And it is, they sometimes do it to individuals. They'll put up like uh, TikTok videos that they react to, like in sexualizing trans people, making fun of them, harassing them. That is unwanted sexualization as well. So why is my educational video considered a violation for being educational? When those videos get released all the time without a problem, why is that allowed on this platform? Yes, it may not have show people's boobs or genitals in those videos, but they are unwantedly sexualizing people. So why is that allowed on this platform? It is, I mean, it shouldn't be allowed in the first place just on the basis of how horrible these people are that we have normalized in our discourse as saying it's okay to say some of the horrific things that we allow like these pundits to say in this, in this world. But uh, by the terms of your own policy, it is wrong. So I am very angry that me as an LGBTQ person trying to educate against the harm being done against my own community gets told that I am violating your community guidelines as if I'm putting out like sexual content for people when I'm trying to educate. When that sort of stuff can exist on this platform in perpetuity with zero challenge. I am pissed off about that. If you can't hear it in my voice. Okay. Last thing that I want to say is an update on the video. Right now, where it sits is I have appealed the, um, the violation. Um, I haven't heard back yet. I did it several hours ago. I will take that as a good sign because I've uh, appealed age gates before on this channel and they usually come back to me within like 10 minutes, usually a denial. 
Um, so the fact that I've taken longer with it has me at least saying like, maybe they're considering the things that I'm saying right now. Um, I try to make my cases in my, as 800 words as I possibly could. So I'll take that as a good thing. But even if the appeal gets through and the video goes back up, that still hurt it in the algorithm. So I'm still angry about it. And the thing that I want to ask is, why was this allowed to happen in the first place? I'm sure it was some automated system. I'm sure the initial violation was flagged by one of Matt Walsh's fans. And then this automated system allowed it to be flagged with zero nuance or discussion. So why, why, I want to know why that was even allowed to happen. Why my video that I spent so much time on, worked really hard on, was very proud of, and I think was important. Why it's momentum, it got to be killed in the algorithm uh, in the first place. Why this even happened. So even if it gets rectified, I'm still angry about it. Oh, and something else that I learned too after recording the rest of this video, that even if it does get rectified and my appeal is approved and the community violation uh, is taken off of the video, uh, the fact that they gave that warning can't be taken back. There's no way in YouTube system to retake back that warning. So next time something like this happens, which I do not trust YouTube to get it right when it does, it means that I will get a copyright or a community strike. And not a warning, a strike. For something, you know, when I should be given a warning considering that I didn't break their policy in the first place. So I've already used up my one warning for something that should not have given me that warning in the first place. So even if they rectify the appeal, that's still going to be held against me no matter what. So yeah, I'm pissed off about that. Um, and I've, I've been talking to people at Nebula because thank you to the folks at Nebula who helped me there. Uh, and there are some people that I know that work at YouTube that are very kindly helping me as well. So to those people, um, you know, I'm talking about YouTube as a company, not the specific people who are understanding and trying to help me. So I know there are many individuals at YouTube that are doing their best to help. Um, but I'm talking about YouTube as a company at the moment. So, so that is going on right now. And hopefully that appeal will get turned over and then we can have that discussion of why this even happened in the first place. But secondly, if it does not, uh, if the appeal gets denied, I will be very, very angry, and believe me, I will make a stink about that if that occurs, and there will be discussions had behind the scenes. But if that's the case, here's what's going to happen. Right now, the video is still available to folks on Patreon and Nebula, so if you are dying to see the video, which please do, because I am I'm very proud of this video, uh, despite all of this crap that has happened, you can go on my Patreon and see the version of the video that uh, exists. It is also available on Nebula. Patreon helps me out directly because you're giving, uh, helping support me directly um, financially. When situations like this happen, having Patreon is really helpful because it knows that I can, I can know I can still pay the bills. Um, and you get yourself videos and fun stuff. Uh, but it's also on Nebula, so if you want to get your access to other cool stuff that's on Nebula and other wonderful creators there, that also helps me uh, alibite a little bit more indirectly, but it is also up there if you want to see the video there. So supporting me in any of those places, I, I highly encourage and recommend right now. If the video gets denied appeal, I will upload a an edited version of the video that I hope doesn't get hit with a violation again because I'm hoping that those are the three clips that they meant or one of those, those three was the ones that they meant. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'll get hit with the copyright strike again. So if you see that I can't post on my community for a week, you know why. Um, but I'm going to upload that version. Uh, I don't wish to because number one, it's removing all the views and comments and the uh, algorithm momentum that the first video had. So I have to start from scratch there. So that's frustrating. And number two, it would be, again, saying that Matt Walsh and his folks were correct, that they, they win the argument in this, in this case, or at least YouTube is saying that. So if I have to censor this stuff, uh, it, it inherently says that they, they won. You know, I'm willing to have a conversation about age gating, but this, what happened now, that pisses me off. Uh, and so to say that, that I broke, violated community, that lets, that's saying tangentially that they're okay to do what they do and say what they say about trans people, that they're correct, inherently tacitly endorsing it. So that's my plan going forward. I'm going to put the, the videos on Patreon, videos on Nebula. If the video's appeal gets removed, hey, you can all watch it. Please support it so that I can ch still get that boost in the algorithm as it can. Um, and if I have to upload a uh, censored version of it, I will be very pissed off and angry and I'll continue pushing that point elsewhere. But at the very least, people will be able to see the video um, in some way, shape or form. Um, whether When I will release that version of it, I'm not sure, uh, just because I know four hour long videos are hard for people to watch during the weekday. So more than likely, if I have to wait for me to re-upload that version of the video, um, sadly, you're just going to have to wait until next Friday because I'll release it on next Friday so that people can catch it on the weekend and that'll sort of be better for the algorithm. Um, so uh, apologies if you have to wait a little bit longer. Um, but if, if, if uh, you don't see that version of the video come up, uh, uh, the old version of the video come up, the new version will be up on Friday uh, for people. So at the very least, wait until Friday. If you can't wait, Patreon Nebula. Um, and that's where I'll leave it. 
Uh, thank you to everyone who's helped me in this situation, to everyone who jumped on my Patreon for supporting me in this situation, uh, for everyone who made a stink about this on Twitter and elsewhere in my comments and things like that, um, to anybody who signed up to Nebula and supported me and other wonderful creators. Um, thank you. I appreciate you. It means a lot. Even just sending a kind word uh, in the comments or just a like or all that stuff. I mean, I'm not, I mean, you know what, put like this video can go out. You know, I don't, I mean, I want this to get heard and as far as possible, but I'm not like looking for the comments here. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who supported me through all of this. Um, and I really hope that YouTube uh, is held accountable uh, for this. Um, Cause uh, like I said, there are many wonderful people that work there, but this I find deeply offensive. Um, and I hope you understand that I'm not an angry person. So me being this pissed off should tell you something. I'll leave it there. Thank you, everybody. I love you all. Take care of yourselves. Live long and prosper.